have the 515 a Husky diaphragm pump and today we are going to do a complete teardown of the fluid manifolds, the balls and seats, and the diaphragms. Keep in mind before you do this you want to remove the pump from its application installment uh, and before you do that of course follow the pressure relief procedure outlined in the manual. So we're going to start by removing the uh, outlet of the pump. It's going to be four bolts on the top. And today we are working on the poly pump. Okay, we have the four nuts removed from the top manifold and we can just simply lift the manifold off. The bolts are actually uh, held in place into the casting um, and we can just leave them in there. You could fully remove them if you wanted to, but uh, they're fine as is. So now we're just going to go ahead and remove the ball and the seat and the cage and we're just simply going to remove the top seal. Do that on the other side as well. And I'm just going to roll the pump over and let the balls kind of fall out. And we'll just lift the cages out and the seats are located down in the bottom of the cage. And then beyond that, beneath the cage is going to be another seal. So we're just going to reach in there with a little pick and we'll pull that seal out. And we'll do that for the other side as well. Now we're just going to go ahead and turn the pump over and uh, we'll repeat this procedure to the inlet of the pump. All right, we have those four nuts off and then we can just pull the inlet manifold off set that aside and then we're going to go ahead and do the same on the inlet side as we did on the outlet side uh, but the order is simply going to be reversed this time uh, because the pump's upside down so we're just going to take our pick and we'll get that o-ring removed from there first and we can lift the cage and if you can get the ball out just grab the ball as well cage cover and o-ring and again, everything is just reversed only because the pump is now upside down. All right, so that completes the procedure for the inlet and the outlet manifold. The next step is going to be to remove all the bolts that are holding the covers in place. All right, now I have all of the nuts off the fluid manifolds and I can just simply pull the manifolds off. We'll just set those aside for now. And again, you can remove all of these bolts, uh, but they'll stay in position if you want them to. Uh, the next step is gonna be to remove the diaphragms. Now, these are a bolt through design, so I can just put a couple of uh, wrenches or sockets on here. Um, I'm gonna choose to use sockets. Uh, sockets fit better and more squarely on here. Um, if you do use a wrench, uh, I would suggest using a box and wrench. The problem, and I'll just take, take a, a, an adjustable wrench, and put it on there just to illustrate what I'm talking about. If you use an open end wrench or um, an adjustable wrench, you can see it's, it doesn't create a really nice fit all the way around and it doesn't grab all of the surfaces of that nut. So you're running the risk of putting all the pressure on only two surfaces and it's really the leading edge of both um, jaws. And what'll tend to happen is you'll tend to round off that nut and over time, you won't be able to get a wrench on there and it'll be much harder to get these diaphragms off in the future. So best practices, put a socket on there or a box end wrench. So I have my two um, sockets ready to go, but before I take the diaphragms off, I have one more thing I wanna review. Um, these are bolt through designs. If this is an over mold diaphragm, uh, there's not going to be these, these bolts right here. The easiest way to get the over mold diaphragm is going to be from one side, you're gonna apply some, some even pressure and you're gonna to wanna to push that diaphragm out. Maybe hard to hold it if you're trying to do it with your hands. So you might have to remove these bolts, put it down on a flat surface and then push the whole pump down in order to lift that diaphragm up. Once that's done, you can get your fingers underneath the diaphragm and simply spin it off by hand. So that's a little tip on the overmold diaphragm. We'll go ahead and remove the bolt through design. Now one of the diaphragms is gonna come loose from the shaft. And we'll just set that aside for right now. And the other diaphragm is gonna stay on the shaft. So what you can do at that point is just push the whole mechanism outside. And then um, on, the diaphragm, and I'm just going to move some grease around a little bit, you'll see that there's a couple of small flats. So we're just going to take a wrench and hold the shaft on the flats, and then we can take our other socket and work that diaphragm off. 
going to take this uh, one side apart a little bit further. We're going to have the plate on the back side from the air side. Uh, this one happens to have a backer diaphragm on it. On an over mold, it'll be a single piece design. And then the diaphragm and the diaphragm bowl fluid side. The final step is going to be to remove the air side plates um, to get back to the diaphragm shaft U-cups and the gasket. So we're just going to put it on its side. We've got six screws that hold each plate on, and I'm just going to remove those six screws. All right, so I've got the six screws removed from the one side, and I'll just lift the plate off. And we've got the gasket, and then down inside here is going to be the U-cup for the diaphragm shaft, and there's a null ring for the shift. So I'm just going to go ahead and take a little pick, and we'll just remove those real fast. And we can work on the other side. And real quick, I just want to call attention to this piece that just kind of fell off. That's just the housing for the muffler or the exhaust. We'll just flip it over and we'll repeat the procedure for the other side. And that is going to complete the teardown of the 515 diaphragm pump fluid manifolds, diaphragms, and center sections.